digital art problems. <laughs> on the left is my Android phone, on the right is my iPhone, and the colours are just insanely different. <laughs> There's a lot of elements in my old work that I still enjoy and that I would like to bring back. Okay, so this is the prologue, all complete and ready to be sent to print. So I decided to use this illustration as the cover. It's one I did last year, but I think it goes really well and I want to use it for volume one as well when I get that printed. So this will be like the thickness of an American issue comic, so it's about 36 pages, but I'm going to be printing on uncoated paper, so it will be slightly different to the usual issue paper. Same with the cover, it's going to be a thick cardstock with a matte lamination. I'll also be printing some prints. Not sure if I will print issues for the remaining chapters, it's a possibility. We, we shall see, I guess it depends on the demand and also how fast I complete chapters. Or how slow I complete chapters. I finished the drum painting that I showed you earlier and I'm very happy with it. I want to make a process video and post it online at some point. I'm just not sure when because the context of the painting isn't really that relevant until volume two, <laughs> which won't be for a while, but I've learned that if I've completed a piece of work and don't post it shortly after, I tend to just never end up posting it. I don't want it to be lost to the archives. So I've also decided to make it into a print for MCM and I'm going to add some foiling. I think I'm going to go with the copper foil so that it's more of an orange colour. I was contemplating on rose gold but uh, I think going copper would be better because it does have a blue colour scheme and orange is complementary to blue. But yeah, after painting this I was like wow. Artists really did have like all the power when it came to creating imagery like this because how else would people make this? So I've been thinking about AI a little bit lately and I'm always kind of like dipping my, dipping my toes in and out of the subject because I think it's good to stay informed but at the same time not get too deep into it to the point where it demotivates you as an artist. I do have a general idea of how people are feeling about the situation and I think it is a bit of a mixed, it's definitely a mixed bag, but after completing this image, I really came into contact with that feeling of how powerful an artist is, because this type of imagery could not be created any other way. I guess before AI, even with AI, there's going to be like differences. You could probably get something similar, but what I mean is that this type of imagery could not exist without artists like us having to hone our skills and like create and manifest a certain vision and taste that we have in our minds onto a canvas. As an artist, we don't use our skills as like a power trip. That's not what we really care about. That's not why we make our work. But I can see that a lot of users of AI, that's maybe how they perceive the ability to produce imagery like this. That's just like one little idea that crossed my mind. There have been others on this subject, but I'm just gonna sprinkle them here and there. Well, I know this can be quite a sensitive subject. I don't wanna subject you to it if you are trying to avoid it um, actively. And I know it can be very tough, especially for young artists who are still figuring out their path and their journey. But at the same time, I think it's still important to discuss how we're feeling about everything and the developments that are occurring because it will affect us all and yeah it's just good to kind of keep an open conversation like talking about how we're approaching it and how we reconcile within ourselves as well because it's not exactly an easy thing to be confronted with especially when they're stealing from us <laughs> i'll keep it to a minimum but just know there will be some talks of it here and there as things evolve and change. But I am here to share my journey as an artist and show people the valuable sides of actually honing your craft and the process of that and learning how to like express yourself and create something from within. For me that's a very fulfilling way um, to orient myself and 
I honestly can't even describe how much art and creating has given to me in my life and has taught me so much about myself and like the world. For artists like us, it's really, it almost is always just about the process and the outcome is secondary. And I do believe that's something that only people with our inclination kind of understand. So I never, I never really have an issue with other people who are trying to just go for the outcome because they would never understand anyway. Yeah, I'd rather save my energy and create <laughs> my own things <laughs> instead of uh, trying to convince somebody of my own philosophy. But yeah, just keeping one eye open at the same time. <laughs> I wonder how I could have watched you walk away. I thought I had run out of pens, but I ended up finding them. I put them all in here. So I can sort all of these out, bring some to the convention. The most popular, I'd say Block's the most popular, followed by, actually, pro probably Jun as well. Jun or, Jun or Block? <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'm just doing the last minute things for comp prep, and then I'm just gonna pack my suitcase. I can show you my mock setup so far. It's very rough because I don't have half of my stock. I'm using placeholders, including things that are not my work. And then the same for A5 print. <laughs> I will have different designs, of course. Over here, I've prepared some sketches 2020. This is the total I'm gonna bring. I think there's about 30. It's also fairly old now and it's kind of strange, like, I released it in 2021, so I suppose it's like two years old now, which isn't super old, but I feel like because 2020 is such a cohesive body of work and it's all my OCs, I feel like it's quite a a good entry point. Yeah, my focus right now is the comics, so I don't really have like a collection of my work put together since 2020. I'm trying to post more on Instagram, actually, let me show you. I'm trying to post more sketches on Instagram because I kind of miss having an archive of what my work looks like through the years. Um, so this is my original account and sometimes I look back on it and I'm like, oh, it's actually really nice to have this record of like how your art changed throughout the years, but I kind of just stopped updating it from 2019 because of my self-sabotaging tendencies and other things, but we won't go into that. I was pretty active up until about this area, 2019, I think it was. Yeah, this was the start of when I kind of couldn't handle the the situation and so I stopped really being as active and didn't post that much. Yeah, I think at some point I was posting like less than 10 posts a year. <laughs> um, I've been, I mean, there's a bit more since then I suppose. 20, well, 2019 was four years ago though if you think about it that way. That's pretty painful oh my gosh well luckily i've worked through a lot of that stuff and i'm coming out the other end i am posting more regularly on this account so this is the account i'm using it's kisses in june so the title of my comic i'm really enjoying it actually there's like no pressure <laughs> it feels like my side account but i feel like i'm actually building something and i feel like that's what i was losing with my main account like it never felt like i was building towards something or adding or creating or involving because every time I'd post I'd lose followers and every time I post it was like I didn't feel like I was adding to my body of work I didn't really have like a, a proper intention other than to say that I'm still alive <laughs> whereas these days I really feel like I'm building my characters I'm building my story my comic I'm building my IPs and like my brand and so every time I post I feel like it's valuable and that is adding to that um, common goal whereas before it was it was more just like trying to transition from using it for fun into like making it my job and career and that had still I still had a lot of residual residual habits of being in a different type of mindset and I still kind of want to keep those fun parts of it where I'm just like using it for fun making friends and like being active in the community but at the same time I'm aware that oh I actually do have things I want to make and I'm intentional about being able to add a little piece of to that each time I share my work. So that's the ethos of this account and yeah I hope you'll join me. I do plan on changing the username 
to Tricky Wagon at some point. <laughs> I don't know when. Maybe when I hit like 10k. I'm not expecting that to be anytime soon because I feel like growth is very non-linear on these types of platforms, especially these days, so I don't feel like I'll gain followers until like I have more to show, especially with the comic. And so I'm gonna be really patient. I feel like that feeling is the most satisfying anyway, and we all know this, don't we? Like it's always the journey and that feeling of making your way towards something rather than achieving the the thing that you're going towards. So yeah, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy these days. So I just wanted to quickly show you this drawing I did last night of Block. I've been looking at my old sketches recently because I've been posting them on Instagram and it kind of made me realise that there's a lot of elements in my old work that I still enjoy and that I would like to bring back into my current work. So this was my first attempt at trying to do that and I feel like it was quite successful. A lot of it's to do with like maybe the boldness of the line and also the definition of the shapes and the planes. I feel like I had a bit more structure back then in some areas, especially with the face, but over time I kind of traded that technical stuff for more expressive, loose type of feeling, which I also enjoy, but I would like to strike a balance between the two somehow. And I feel like this hits it quite well, like it's quite expressive still, the lines are very lively and not too, not super clean, like not stiff, so, but at the, at the same time it has that structure. MCM, we are setting up, getting there slowly. I don't have my comic or my prints, what up now, so I'm gonna have to do that in the morning. trying to figure out my overhead setup for working on my iPad right now because I don't have my larger tripod with me and I don't have my Cintiq so I have to kind of see what I can do. I still have this overhead rig. I'm attempting to attach it to something so that I can film my iPad. Uh, I would usually use my large tripod for this which has like a um, a really cool mechanism where you can like kind of turn it inside out and so that you can hang the camera upside down. You can film overhead shots pretty easily. I hope you can tell my voice is still kind of a bit janky, <laughs> but it's definitely getting better. There's a few things I've been wanting to show you. I recently purchased a new Apple Pencil nib. I have heard about these, but I didn't really look into them that much because I just assumed they wouldn't be as good as like Apple's version, but I was very wrong. <laughs> this isn't sponsored or anything, so I'm not gonna link the particular one I got, but you can definitely find similar types online and they're pr probably quite comparable. But you could see like there's a tiny metal nib. I'd say this is so precise it feels like i'm drawing traditionally which is insane i don't even have that sensation when i'm drawing with my cintiq but yeah i'm gonna attempt to finish a sketch that i started a key sketch so i'll show you that once i get this set up oh for those who don't know this is a sketchboard pro 
Like I use it every now and then, especially nowadays because of not having my Cintiq and having to use my iPad. It gives me more space to lean on, so it's a bit more comfortable than just using the iPad on its own. I have a paper-like screen protector. It's a bit murky right now um, at this point. I've had it for about two years now. Oh wow. Let me turn my exposure down a little bit. Okay, so there's a sketch. This is going to be a separate video to the vlog. Like everything I just filmed now would be in the vlog, but this video is going to be separate because I intend to post it for Key's birthday, but also, yeah, I did actually add like a birthday element. <laughs> but yeah, this video, I wanted to post it because I have some questions regarding kisses in June um, that I got from Instagram that I've been meaning to answer for quite a while. It's been probably over a month. And I also want to reintroduce Draw With Me style videos um, onto the channel. So I thought this would be a nice one to start with. I'm going to do the voiceover separate because my voice is still like this. Usually I, when I do Q&As, I do the talking as I'm drawing, but then I always find that I can't put my full attention and focus on creating the image. So instead of doing that, I'm going to film separately and then do the voiceover separately too. Hello, hello, hello. It's June and I have so much planned for June. <laughs> I thought I'd update today because I am preparing my shop for a relaunch. Uh, it's a small one. There aren't that many new products, but there is like the comic issue, so it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I also have this print that I managed to finish. I feel like the foil works so well and I'm very happy that I decided to go for the copper instead of gold. It just is perfect. The only thing about the print that I would say is that I feel like the contrast between this black and this background is not as clear as it is in the actual image that I painted, but I don't think it's too bad. I feel like it still works. Sorry, my desk is a little bit messy. <laughs> I have another project, um, like a secret project that I've been working on. And this image is like the first little glimpse. This project will be a part of the comic itself. So it's not like completely different. It's it's actually like contained within the, the comic, but it won't have context until about volume two. But yeah, I can show you the prints I also printed. I am going to include these ones with the comic online. So you can buy the comic on its own or you can buy it with a random print or you can buy it with all three of these prints. So it's up to you depending on what you fancy. I'd say these two are similar in popularity and then this one was a bit more popular. I can see why, to be honest. <laughs> but the shop should be open now, so if you do want to grab those, feel free to take a look. And then I have these two prints, which I did print last year for MCM in October. However, they were on a different style of cardstock. These ones are not as thick as the cardstock I usually go for. I think I accidentally picked 250 gram when I usually pick 350 gram. So I was a bit sad when I realized they were a bit like quite substantially thinner so I have reduced the price slightly but I suppose it's in print so you're buying the artwork itself. So these ones you can buy separately and then these ones are also double-sided but they're only available with the issue. So yeah that was a lot to explain but <laughs> shop stuff is always very complicated and there's a lot of admin that goes into it. So I want to show you these two designs which are the bookmarks I got printed last year. I have shown them a little bit, but I feel like I've not really shown them off as much as I could because these are actually one of my favorite products that I've made. And when I painted the flowers, it was actually my first time using like textured, textured brushes to create this type of effect. And I had so much fun making these. I just really like how the colors came out. I feel like the designs represent the characters very well too. And they are holographic, but in this type of lighting, it doesn't show up as well. Okay, so I just turned my desk lamp on, so you can see it catching the hollow now because there's more of a direct light source. Hello. So I've been boarding chapter one recently. It is quite overdue. I did have a version of it that I did whilst I was abroad, but it was just the first few pages and I wasn't really feeling like it was setting the tone correctly so I ended up redrawing quite a lot of those pages 
and settled on what I have right now, which I think is working quite well. I just paddled this one and I really can't wait to draw this scene. But yeah, chapter one is quite minimal on the dialogue. I have to rely a lot on the acting and the body language, like the non-verbal communication. It's been quite challenging um, and it's definitely a new experience for me. This is only my second time boarding a comics, you know, go easy on me. <laughs> I'm definitely quite slow, but I, f I feel like over time I will gain confidence and I will be able to make shots faster. Well, with this chapter and the previous one, the prologue, I spent quite a lot of time on the boards just because I feel like if I spend more time in at this stage, I save myself more time overall because then I'm not changing too much later on and all of the thinking, like the hard thinking has been taken care of. During the production there's just so much going on and so much to do that if you are to kind of question yourself in the previous stage you add on a lot of time whereas I think being able to trust your past decisions is probably the way forward. I do write myself some notes the dialogue is all numbered in my script, so I'm able to just write the numbers there and then refer to the script to see what goes there. Actually, I could show you the script too. I should put it away. This is a few pages for chapter one. It's very description heavy because most of it's non-verbal. I also took out a, a little scene that I had. It wasn't in the original script actually. I added it last week and then decided against it as I was boarding because I realised how long it will make this chapter and also introducing that character at this point of the story doesn't really make sense. I think that would add too much importance to that character so I decided against it. And yeah, overall I'm pretty pleased. I hate, I just hope like the mood and the style and the pacing sh like comes through and so that when you're reading my comic I hope you feel like this is like a certain style of comic that is not that it's unique to me but it's like a part of the experience of reading this particular comic. Like you can get a feeling of what the writer deems important depending on how they handle their exposition. I've been quite conscious of that process and I hope it shows. It is the type of comic that you should probably linger a little bit longer on the panels than usual. Yeah, I mean, I can't control that part of it. I always feel like part of the experience of a comic is brought by the reader themselves and their own experience of life and what they've been through. And so that aspect of the collaboration between reader and my comic is not something in my control. Well, how they consume something and how they perceive something is part of the experience of reading anything really, like any type of story or any anything, honestly. I suppose that's why we always differ in our interpretations and views of life and the world. Being in this now, it's very important to know that you can't please everybody and that not everyone will re resonate with your style of writing. I think it's very important that I stay true to my own vision as well and just hope that the readers who are looking for this type of dory will eventually find it. Hello everybody, I have a package. So I ran out of the blue circle labels that I was using for my shop orders, but I do have some that are like square or rectangular. So I was gonna make a little design for that. However, the company I buy labels from just released a new color it is a bit more lilac than it is lavender, so it isn't exactly correct for my shop, but it's close enough. Also, please ignore my nails. I don't own any nail varnish remover because I literally haven't painted my nails in years. Because I am moving next week, I'm just like delaying stuff until I get to London again. I kind of wish I bought blue ones again too, so that I could print, or blue and yellow ones, so I can print like a key design and a gin design, but I think I have enough here for quite a while. <laughs> and I opened my shop yesterday and uploaded the listings for my Kisses in June prologue. Yeah, thank you everybody who placed an order. I will be packing the orders today and tomorrow 
And then there's some orders that I can't ship until later because of um, the pre-order and the back orders of the charms, which I will show you when I get them. Although I think they're gonna arrive after I leave, so maybe in the next vlog. Like, I feel like the last couple of months have been quite yeah, oh yeah, because like the last couple of months I've been trying to find a new place to live. At first, it I felt very uprooted, especially after I had come back and I fell out of like all of my routines. I wasn't feeling good at all. Like I was in quite a low mood. I was still trying to um, like stay active though, like keep keep going on walks and things like that. But across May, that slowly kind of diminished alongside my mood and then sometime in May something switched on in my brain and since then I've been getting back into rhythm. This is why I really value working on my comic because it really helps orient me. It allows me to frame all of my habits in a structure and that allows me to then order the things in my life or organize myself and I feel like if I didn't have this comic project to guide me in a direction I would probably feel very lost and I've been thinking about that lately and I'm the type of person who doesn't dwell too much on the past so I end up forgetting like my internal feelings regarding it so sometimes sometimes to a fault because then I don't learn from those times or I will forget about how I felt and then when it, it reappears it takes me longer to recognize like oh this is a pattern or this is something that's happened before. Just reflecting on how I used to feel about the work I was creating just a few years ago before I started working on the Sangha project I definitely felt a lot more directionless or I felt as if I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing or that I the thing that I wanted to be doing. Now that I'm in a position where I am working on the comic, it doesn't I don't have that feeling anymore. It's quite comforting in a way. It makes me realize like this is what I was always meant to be doing and it sounds very strange to be so specific in your life. Um on the surface it may look that way or it may come across that way, but it's it's not really the outcome of creating the comic, it's what you learn as a person going down this path because it comes with a lot of challenges, it comes with a lot of lessons and I think if I didn't walk that path I would not encounter those pain points, those pressure points that would force me to challenge myself, that would force me to grow. That's why this path allows me to essentially become who I'm p supposed to be. Yeah, it just, it just feels right. It's difficult to describe, but it 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 um extremely rewarding, and I'm always super super grateful for all the support. So thank you everyone who placed an order yesterday. I have a few copies left, and I also have some reprints coming because I did get a lot of B grades this time. So I'm in a bit of a, a dilemma with um, the printing process of the comic because I could go in several several directions. My goal for the next across the next year, now that I'm being more active, is to match my income to what it used to be before, and so that I don't have to worry too much about financing this endeavor. I'll probably talk about how I'm trying to perceive things in terms of my presence online and my social media because it's always going to be a point of conversation when it comes to being a small business online at least for now until the internet becomes completely inundated with synthetic data to the point where it becomes unusable but until then it's relevant. Yeah, it'll come up and I'm sure you guys can relate as well to, to all of this because we're all in a similar situation. Or we're all like dealing with the the modern ways that we're communicating and connecting. I forgot to buy cello bags for the comic. This is gonna take a while because I printed the whole roll. <laughs> but it will save time in the long run from reprinting like every time I need some. So 
when I got back from MCM, I decided to read the prologue because it had been quite a while since I had reviewed it and I wanted to see how it read as a book in its, I suppose in its intended form. The pacing definitely feels a lot better I think and I want to reformat the web version to have a bit of that spacing incorporated so it's more like a, a webtoon because you do just read it like um, each page is like vertical uh, after one another and there's not a lot of spaces in between the page breaks. It can feel a bit abrupt at times. I was formatting the pages for Twitter, Instagram and my website and it was quite a lot of work so going forward I might just update my website with the full comic and then just show previews on my social media and see how that goes and then yeah continue that for a little bit and I also want to make longer updates but less frequently. So I bought these mailers and they're not the same as the usual ones I get which are very rigid and so I don't have to worry about bugs getting destroyed in the mail but these ones are very floppy so I'm a little concerned about sending the issue just on its own because this is also quite susceptible to bending um, so I'm just gonna weigh how much it, it is with a backing board. Oh gosh it's over I mean, what if I cut it to size? This is a very heavy packing board. No, I could tape the corners. So that's a lot of work for me. I do have this thinner backing board, which might help a little bit. Oh my God, one gram over. Well, I guess I could cut it. Okay, I've got two grams to spare. And one do not bend sticker. Okay, a grand total is two, four, six grams. So it should be okay. It looks so big in person though. Okay. <laughs> Please ignore the fact that I'm wearing my pyjama shorts. It's just because it's pretty warm up here and it's summer in Britain and obviously our buildings are not made to release heat and so everything just kind of stays inside and also the heat rises up. Uh, but yes, you probably don't recognize this space. Um, no, I haven't moved yet, but this is actually my brother's space. I'm homesitting for him whilst he's away and it actually works out pretty well because I have found my own place. It's also in London and I'm able to stay here as I sort things out with my space. I'm waiting on like furniture and my bed. I was hoping to have moved by May but we're now in June um, so I feel like I am a little bit behind with what I intended for during the year but it's okay. I'm kind of getting by and adjusting to things and I'm really looking forward to having my own space again and just being able to be fully creative and allow myself to spend time like on myself and to focus on what I want in my life and to manifest that into the future because I think I think creatively I have so many ideas but for me to be able to manifest and express those ideas I need to have the right kind of environment around me right the, and the right support system and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to move to London specifically because I have a lot of friends here I have my family here it allows me to then feel more connected and want to expand and grow uh, I tend to be kind of vague about what's been troubling me over the last few years just because it doesn't just involve me and it involves other people and my family and so I don't really feel like I can disclose that and also I am quite a, a private person in general. I have shared a little bit on Patreon and things like that but overall in general I I try to resolve personal affairs personally because I, I believe that um, even though I am public facing with you right now I do think there's a certain boundary that I need to uphold and I think I think that's something that people are more respectful of these days but obviously there are always people who feel entitled to want to know like everything that's going on in your life so there's a lot of factors that went into my decision to move here to move to London again I was here during December January February and March and I really enjoyed it I I feel like I was able to finally kind of like do all the things I wanted to do prior to like the pandemic and things. I'm someone who's always wanted to live in like a bigger city 
and to be able to have more creative opportunities around me and meet more creative people and meet more people in general. I come from like a very small town and I feel like I haven't had that arc in my life yet. I mm, Well, I have lived in bigger cities, but I, I wasn't at that point in my life where I felt like I could openly express myself in the world externally. I was always a very internal person, somebody who's very introverted. And the decision to move was something that I did before um, lockdowns and stuff, but I feel like was cut short because of COVID. And with Kisses in June, I feel like I've fallen behind my schedule just because um, I've been trying to figure out where to live and just the logistics of that. And I have been doing my best. I feel like I did quite a lot with the prologue and I have made more progress with the following chapters. But the thing is, like, I looked back and I was looking at my script and on the script, I wrote the dates. I wrote the months that I wrote the script for volume one. And it was like August, September last year. And I was just like... What have, I, what have I been doing the last year? <laughs> like, where did it go? Yes, I'm really looking forward to moving into my new place. I'll be there for at least a year. So it gives me a good amount of time to to ground myself, to figure out my schedule, routines, and to just like expand my circle here in London. After a year, I don't know where I will be, to be honest. But I do want to be able to experience this type of city in, at least once in my life. And take as many opportunities as I can doing so. I just want to le like leave the last few years behind me now and just start this new phase and this new chapter of my life. So even up until maybe May, I was still thinking and feeling in terms of like before pandemic and after pandemic. But I realized it was keeping me kind of stuck and in a negative frame of mind where I was just focused so much on the things that had changed that I didn't like and not focusing on the things that I could change to improve my situation. And so I decided that I wasn't gonna think like that anymore. And obviously it's still helpful to describe certain situations in those terms, but if for me, when I talk to myself or like in my thoughts, I don't entertain those now. I'm focused on the present moment. I'm focused on my projects now and the future what I want to build, what I believe in. And yeah, it's it's funny because I feel like I don't have like huge ambitions or um, like I don't really care too much about big success or anything like that. I, I just want to be able to continue this path of creating and be able to sustain myself. So there's this weird phenomena that I noticed about being on YouTube and vlogging there's also the fact that because I vlog, I'm able to have a very vivid idea of where I was and how I was feeling and thinking in the past uh, because there is this like log of my life and it's not the full picture at all, but even for myself, knowing that like, we even know this for like, when we view other people's lives and what they post on social media we know like it's a highlight reel we know that it's curated for a certain purpose and i even fall into the trap of looking at my old videos and being like oh she was so much happier or something <laughs> or more like vibrant and had more ambition but i know that that's not necessarily true either and i have to even remind myself of how I was really feeling at those times and at that point. And luckily I have like journals and things and I recall certain conversations I had with friends and obviously the reason why I decided to take a break and to focus on a longer term project is because I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I wasn't feeling fulfilled in just making short term contributions. And I know for myself, since I was a kid, what I've wanted to to do and what I wanted to create. And so because I knew that I was going almost against that, it didn't feel good. Even though I had like external successes internally, it didn't feel as though I was really moving very much. But now it's like I feel I feel very content in my life. It's weird because now I feel like I have the opposite 
problem almost where like I feel very fulfilled in my work but being able to translate that into external success is something that I have to figure out and I'm always I almost feel like I'm starting again which I'm framing in a kind of a positive way because I've been saying like it feels like I'm building something it feels like I'm working towards something which is ideally where you want to be because it satisfies your motivational like neuro circuits it's like a new challenge for me now to figure this out uh it obviously I have my fears I have my doubts about it I have all of those emotions come up but I think I'm just more equipped to deal with them and more aware of the traps that I could fall into because of having fallen into them prior <laughs> hello 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 so <laughs> I'm here in my brand new space. I moved everything yesterday, but I didn't get the chance to sort anything out. Now, the next day, I don't have any furniture, so I, ca I can't really store things, but I can put my clothes away in this wardrobe and just set things up in like the kitchen and the bathroom. I'm getting my bed today. I actually ordered a futon because I've always really wanted a futon. <laughs> this is kind of like giving me the opportunity to finally get one and then I have some IKEA stuff coming the day after. One of the main reasons why I got this space is because of this absolutely gorgeous patio window and door which you can't see right now because it's covered. I guess I'll just give you a quick rundown of the kitchen. Pretty standard but it's a good size and I love how it's separate from everything else. It doesn't have a window but it's not a huge deal breaker for me. And there's a bathroom, got a nice mirror. Um, my shower and toilet, and I think there's storage in there. This is the entrance and the main room. That's spicy. I'm gonna try and um, fill my desk and then I feel like I will be done by tomorrow more or less like with the bare bones of stuff I mean and I, I will have my setup so I'll be able to get back into work but I don't have wi-fi <laughs> I needed something for my books and I also wanted something that I could use to put my traditional art supplies on. My very minimal amount of traditional supplies but I, I've i been drawing in my sketchbook more lately and I just want it to be easily accessible from my desk. So I was searching Ikea. I happened to find this model which I think is fairly new. It's a perfect combination of like a bookshelf and a trolley and it comes in this really cute green colour. <laughs> pretty much set up everything now for my flat. I just need to get like the odd supplies. I'll also have to redo my desk a little bit like with the cable management. I want to do something similar to what I had before. I don't think I'm gonna do much else. I feel like it's very functional right now and there's not much I'm gonna be doing um, decoration wise. I like the idea of decorating. I just I suppose I've never tried it properly so I don't know what my style would be. <laughs> quite like things being pretty clean though. I already feel like I own too much stuff. I quite like how I've got everything somewhat tucked away or in the, in its own space. I still have to um, <laughs> clear up all of my recycling. <laughs> Sorry, so sorry for what I've done. 
He's been sleeping all day. You can just see his little nose. Hello, good morning. About to start my work day. So I've been here for about three weeks. Zuko's been here for a week and I still don't have Wi-Fi, which isn't a huge problem sometimes unless I have to send emails. And so that's been a bit difficult. And I've not been able to message people because I ran out of data very early on and I can't renew my data until later after my Wi-Fi comes. So it's been very hard to get in touch and to just be online as well and, and active. It's somewhat a nice experience because I don't think I've really lived offline since I was a kid. <laughs> the feeling of not being constantly kind of like checking or even just like consuming stuff because I have taken breaks from social media before but I would always be online in some capacity like you know on YouTube watching things or just scrolling. I know like for me YouTube is my biggest distraction I'd say. Like I know I'll be watching something with the pretense of being like oh this is useful or this is good to know which is true to a certain extent and I think YouTube isn't as bad as other platforms because it's long form and you can learn a lot in a video but I think if you're constantly bombarding yourself with inform information, new information, it's really hard to actually integrate that knowledge into your actual life. I'm finding this respite quite nice to be able to reflect on how I'm living and being able to direct my energy into like one focused area. So I should be getting Wi-Fi tomorrow, which I'm both looking forward to and also very afraid of <laughs> because I, I feel like I've been in a really good rhythm with my work with my and with my schedule. So once I do get Wi-Fi again and internet, I need to be very careful with how I use it and how I start to implement it back into my life. I don't think it's been enough time to really break a lot of the habits that I have. I feel like I'll just slip right back into <laughs> how I was operating before. For me, I still use blockers I, for my apps and for my websites. There's just some, always some sort of compulsion, which I know is in, engineered into these apps. Like my neural pathways are probably so deeply ingrained that it will take me like 10 years of like not doing it. I think when I first started on YouTube, it was much more about like the external perception of what you're doing rather than the internal journey that you're embarking on. And I really like seeing this shift of creators who are really talking about what they're going through emotionally and how they're trying to resolve that for themselves. It's less about what they're doing or like what they're making. Although I think it's good to be able to strike a balance. And for me personally, I, I do want to put out my comic. I do want to grow a readership. I do want that to be my main focus and for it to have its own kind of like life outside of me. But at the same time, I, I see it's important to to share the, the hardships and share the, the emotional side of like being an artist. I've always had an inclination towards the more spiritual aspects and internal inquiry. I think when you're young and you're trying to figure out how to conduct yourself in life without a framework or without a philosophy given to you or without one that you've decided upon, early on it's very it's very difficult to kind of navigate that especially with all the distractions that we have these days i also think like we're constantly updating our models of what the world is and we're also kind of being influenced by other people's ideas of that and we're exposed to so many so many different versions of what the world could be that it's it's probably quite paralyzing these days to be able to really discern for yourself what you want to believe in and what you think is true because it's only really a matter of your own feelings and experiences and how that can really form your perspective and allow you to have some sort of faith in like or like a knowing to then be able to feel like you're actively like participating in life 
in a model that it makes sense to you. I've written about this somewhat on my Patreon as well. It's like you're trying to find a structure for yourself to conduct how you want to be in life without any guidance. At least for me, as somebody who was kind of the one who was responsible for my parents' emotions rather than the other way around, I didn't really receive a framework or guidance of like how I should operate or how I should live. So for me, having to establish that on my own has taken me quite a long time and I'm still working that out. And I feel like I'm quite lucky in that I really do subscribe to a lot more of the spiritual aspects of life and like the practices and those really speak to me. And it's something that I always can come back to. It's very grounding for me. It's something that is quite a big part of my life that I don't really talk about on the blog. I don't haven't really shared much about. Um, but it's just one aspect or one way you could decide to like one technique or one perspective you could you could use in order to move yourself successfully through the blockages that you may encounter on this journey or this art journey or on this life journey i hope that was satisfactory <laughs> i'm gonna get back to work because honestly like i don't really know what i'm talking about <laughs> this is this is the problem with trying to talk about these types of topics they're very abstract and they're a matter of opinion they're very individual it's very difficult to get across the feelings if you haven't experienced it before maybe it's not as digestible as just being like oh i'm working on this today here are my storyboards and i'm going to be doing layouts but i i think it's still such an integral part of making the art that it's worth at least mentioning, to some extent, sometimes. You're moving your vlog again, like... Oh, sorry, my sister talks too much. <laughs>